a royal coup, international war and the fight for a dynasty. This is the Jacobite Rebellions. It all starts in 1660. The monarchy is back in England after 20 years in exile and the new king, Charles II, can't wait to bring peace and stability back to England. One problem though, he had his brother James with him and he wasn't about to let that happen. England was at war with the Dutch Republic, but people in Parliament are getting a bit uneasy. Allying with France against the Dutch? Louis is a Catholic, you know, and we don't want any of that Catholic influence in our Protestant country. So we're going to pass a law that no Catholics can serve in the military or the government. James kind of panics, then resigns from being head of the Navy, and it comes out that in his 20 years away from England, he converted to a Catholic, and England flipped their shit. The last time a Catholic was on the throne, they burned Protestants at the stake, and considering England was being allied with France, and they had a Catholic king with absolute power, Parliament thought this might give James some really bad ideas. But Charles was still young and could still have a kid, so James might not even be king. And Charles said to James, look, I didn't go to France for 20 years and hide in an oak tree just to lose the monarchy when I die. So if your daughter marries a Protestant, I like this guy, William of Orange, then people won't be mad if I die before I get a kid. And people won't be mad if you take the throne because a Protestant comes after you. Then Charles died of a stroke and James became king. Britain and Europe held their breath. As soon as the crown touched his head, two rebellions started to try and overthrow him. They didn't really get anywhere, but it did make him paranoid. So he calls up some men to make a permanent army, so this sort of stuff doesn't happen again, and he gives some of the command of the army to Catholics. This doesn't sound good to 90% of the population, but they were mostly okay with it, because the king was 50, and his wife had 10 miscarriages, so it's not like the next king would be a Catholic, and he'd die soon. Then the queen got pregnant, and James said his son would be a Catholic. The Scottish and Irish were pretty excited having a king that would respect Catholics, but this scared the shit out of the English Protestants in government. And when he made a law saying Catholics and Protestants would be equal, they thought this might actually make it so Catholics were above Protestants in the future. They refused to pass the law, so he shut down Parliament and arrested anyone that disagreed with him, and the Protestants started to riot. While the riot was going on, seven guys in government hatched a plan to try and get rid of James and replace him with his daughter's Protestant husband, William of Orange, the ruler of the Netherlands. They sent a letter saying, The king's gone nuts. The people are all scared and they're all angry. And now the king says he's going to make the country Catholic. We need you. We need you to take the throne to save this country. And the ruler of the Netherlands, wanting to stop the war between the English and France against his Dutch Republic, started planning his invasion. One problem though, France and England were allied and their combined navy could destroy his troops before he crossed the channel and even if he got there, Louis would send troops to crush him. He needs a distraction. So he gets Holy Roman Emperor Leopold II to fight France and because France and the Holy Roman Empire are neighbours, Louis needed all the troops he could to protect France, so he couldn't help James. Now with France out of the way, William set sail for England and wrote to the English people, I come to free you from the dictator, Catholic James, and restore Parliament and Protestants back to power. He landed in England on the 5th of November, and James, seeing the amount of troops defecting, tried to fight in Catholic Ireland, but had to flee to France on Christmas Eve, four years after coming to the throne. But he wouldn't give up that easily, and his family would fight for their rightful throne. The Jacobites, the supporters of James, waited for their king to return, and the French bided their time to use their leverage to their advantage. Eighteen years later, England and France are at war, in the War of the Spanish Succession, and France really needed to use their leverage, because France was getting absolutely smashed in the war. A few years before, when England and Scotland united into the Kingdom of Great Britain, the Scots weren't exactly happy losing their independence getting taxed and making their economy tied to England. And because James II was dead at this point, Louis XIV gave his son, James III, the money, the troops and the go-ahead to invade. But when he left from Dunkirk and got halfway across the channel, seeing Scotland in the distance, the wind turned 
and it was too dangerous to cross, and Louis wanted his ships and his leverage alive to see another day. They wouldn't have to wait long though, because in 1715, Queen Anne died, and she had no kids. She wrote to James, Look, I've got no legitimate heirs, because I can't produce a child, so your son, James III, can be king, as long as he converts to Protestantism. James said, No, I was born a Catholic, and I'll die a Catholic. This would be the most stupid mistake he ever made. So when she died, the crown skipped over 42 Catholic heirs to the throne to land with King George I of Hanover, a German that didn't speak a word of English. England was pissed, and having an English monarch didn't seem so bad in comparison to the German one. And they began to plan another revolt. At the same time, an election was happening in Parliament, and the Whigs beat the Tories. The Tories didn't like losing, and wanted the Jacobites back so the king could shut down parliament and replace it with the Tories in power. Lord Marr, one of the guys that lost power after the election, went to Scotland and called for men to join him to first control Scotland and then invade England to restore the Jacobites and overthrow the government and this German king. This guy was Secretary of State though, and he had no business leading an army, and when England finally responded and sent an army, even though Ma outnumbered the English 3 to 1, when he finally faced them, he lost twice as many men, and he had to retreat. This really depressed the Jacobites, and even when James III landed in Scotland, even the sight of their king couldn't get them to continue the fight, and worried that he'd be captured, Ma and James fled back to France. King George showed no mercy, burnt homes and massacred anyone that supported James, and the cause seemed hopeless. The next year, France made peace with Britain, and Louis had to kick James out of France, but since he was a diehard Catholic, on a continent mostly full of Protestants, he got invited to the Papal States by the Pope. It was here the last hope for the Jacobites was born, Bonnie Prince Charles, James's son, and he waited for his turn to take the English throne. 30 years later, James III is 56, and Bonnie Prince Charles saw his chance to invade, because Europe was at war again in the Austrian War of Succession, and pretty much everyone was fighting each other. And when France and Spain allied, three years in, they both realised this Jacobite king could be useful. Charles was ready to be an absolute monarch, with no parliament to question him, and he'd waited long enough. And seeing that most of the troops in England were away fighting on the continent, he saw his chance. So he got a bunch of guns, ships and men together to invade Britain by going to Scotland, but like the last invasion, as soon as they left port, wind smashed them back into the port. But Bonnie Prince Charles wasn't going to give up like his dad, he couldn't waste the opportunity. He didn't need the French, and he landed in Scotland with seven, yes seven men, and started rallying Scots to fight for him, and a thousand people marched with him to Edinburgh, where they claimed him King of Scotland. The governor in Scotland that was appointed by King George, now King George II, only had 700 men to fight with, and they were raw and untrained, and they got smashed by the Jacobites. The government crapped themselves, and then called the Duke of Cumberland, who was fighting against the French in Belgium, back to London, with 12,000 troops, to crush the revolt. The Jacobites started to argue with each other, look, we have the troops, protect Scotland, and then they could leverage their troops to make a peace treaty. But Prince Charles was like, no, I'm in sight of London. People will welcome me with open arms. But the French weren't coming this time, and the troops they got in England weren't enough. And Charles admitted he didn't really get any messages of support from England. The Scots were pissed. What are you thinking? This is reckless. You'd rather make a stupid run for London than defend Scotland and maybe make a treaty? And while Charles and his army went to take the capital, an army left there to try and cut them off. Charles only had 5,000 men against 12,000, and even he had to admit this was suicide, and he ran to Scotland. They held out for five months, but the French still hadn't arrived to give them reinforcements, and he had to fight. The English and the Jacobite army met at Inverness in the Battle of Cullenden, and given the fact this battle is named after the British commander, you can see where this is going. It didn't go well, and fighting only lasted one hour. From the 7,000 Jacobites at the start of the battle, 
2,000 were dead or seriously injured by the end, compared to 300 English. They got cut down as they ran. Charles managed to run, chased by the English Navy, across the British Isles. Even after this, with a £30,000 bounty on his head, no one turned him in and escaped to France. He would never return. After the Scots tried to invade, King George had enough of the Scots and broke their independence. Barney Prince Charles got kicked out of France, and his brother Henry became a Catholic priest a year later. Barney Prince Charlie never forgave his brother for giving up the cause. He died of a stroke in January 1788, a disappointed and bitter old man. And so the Jacobites, dethroned kings of England, died out, and the fight for their throne was lost. But the idea of rightful kings being kicked out by the English would become a pillar of Scottish identity for decades afterwards. And the story of the almost triumph in 1745 would be told for generations to come.